to show you a step-by-step -step installation of our drop-in series system for the L5P Duramax. Now this kit is part number DIFS L5P 2001. If you prefer a paper copy of the installation manual or to view it from your phone, you can hop on fastride.com and download the installation manual. Now, another thing before you begin the installation process, it's a good idea to go ahead and register that warranty. Now let's go ahead and get this installation started. Now we are going to be using our two post lift back here for video purposes, but it is absolutely not necessary to put your truck on a lift. This can be done right in your driveway, but it does help having a floor jack and some jack stands. All right, first step, put a drain pan underneath your filter housing and go ahead and drain that filter housing. Now I will say, there's not always going to be a ton of fuel that comes out until you remove the two fuel lines from the top of that housing. Now in this case, as you can see, no fuel's coming out, so it will start draining as soon as we remove those two plastic lines. All right, now that the electrical connector is off, release the locking tabs from both of the fuel lines, and then those can be disconnected. Now, something very cool that we offer is quick connect plugs. So it's not necessary for the installation, but it is nice because you can place those in the fuel lines once you disconnect them to keep any fuel from leaking out while you're doing the rest of the installation process. Okay, now that I have those fuel lines disconnected from the top of the filter housing, you can see it's allowing that filter to uh, drain out very well. So now get a 13 millimeter socket and an extension and loosen the three bracket mounting nuts. You don't have to fully remove them, just loosen them enough to allow that bracket to slide back and forth. Okay, now that the three mounting nuts are loosened, get a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench and remove the two bolts that hold the filter housing to that bracket. Now, sometimes necessary to wiggle the bracket around as you're loosening them to get them fully out of there. Now that you have the two mounting bolts fully removed, hold down on the bracket, push up on the filter housing, and that will remove the filter housing from the bracket, and they can both be pulled out individually. Now remove the three Torx bolts and we're going to remove this water and fuel sensor. Be sure to note the orientation of that sensor. And as you can see on this one, the sensor connector is pointed directly to the back of the truck. Now that the bolts are removed, use a flathead screwdriver and gently remove that water and fuel sensor. Be sure not to damage it. You can pry up a little bit and slowly work your way around that sensor. Okay, I have the sensor out. As you can see, there's all sorts of road grime on this. So I'm gonna take it and clean this up very well before we install it in the new fast filter housing. All right, we've got our sensor cleaned up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unbox our drop-in system. And once I do that, we're gonna go ahead and lay out all of the components and check it with the installation manual just to make sure we do have everything we need. Now again, don't forget using this serial number here to register your warranty. Okay, I have confirmed that we do have all of the components we need, so now we're going to move on to installing the new water and fuel sensor. Install the supplied O-ring in the O-ring groove of the sensor. That bottom O-ring right there, a new one of these will come with each new filter element, the OEM filter element that you purchase. So you're going to want to replace that before installing the new element. Now, place a thin layer of grease on this large O-ring right here on the bottom, and then this O-ring right here, right in the middle. Now, as I stated before, 
keyboard notating the orientation of the sensor. When installing it, make sure it is pointed in the same direction as it was in that factory housing. And for this application, again, directly toward the rear of the truck. Install the supplied three bolts right into the sensor and then tighten them accordingly. Now it's not necessary to put it in a vise while you're installing the inlet and outlet fittings, but it is a good idea and our vise has soft jaws so it'll prevent any damage to this hard coated aluminum housing. The Dash 10 O-ring is going to go in the fuel manifold here and the Dash 8 O-ring is going to thread into the filter housing. They can't be reversed because one thread is larger than the other. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten both of these fittings. Now we can move on to installing the bracket on the drop-in system. Take your two supplied spacers and Notate the side with the countersink as this will go toward the bolt head. Now that I have placed them all together, I can go ahead and install it onto the filter base. Okay, now that both bolts are hand threaded into the filter housing, let's go ahead and evenly tighten those. Now grab your three carriage bolts and this bracket is going to mount just like the factory one did so the nuts will be facing toward the inside of the frame rail. That completes the assembly of the filter base. Now we can move on to the next step. Now get some thread tape and place it onto our push lock fitting. When you're installing the thread tape, you'll want to hold it by the barb end, and just like that, you'll thread it clockwise, so that way as you're threading the fitting into this fitting, it won't remove that thread tape and you'll get a good seal. Now that we have the thread tape on there, we'll thread it into our quick connect fitting. Now, tighten accordingly. Okay, now that we have this assembled, take some grease and place it on the inside of your push lock hose here. Make sure I get that placed on the fitting as well. And then we can press our hose onto the fitting. Any of these push lock fittings here, you don't need to use a hose clamp. These barbs are good for roughly 300 PSI with no clamp at all. Now, take your 90 degree push lock fitting and I'm gonna place the grease on the fitting itself. Make sure I get some grease on the inside of the hose push it in. Now this fitting can be a little tricky to get a good grip on it, so sometimes it does help to put it in the vise. All right. You'll want to release the locking tab up here on that fuel return line fitting, and then you will install the fast quick connect fitting, then reconnect that factory return line. Okay, now we can go ahead and install the filter base assembly onto the truck. I will say it's a bit tight getting it up in there, so you'll need to work it around a little bit to get it set in place.
Once you have the FAST system securely mounted, don't forget to connect the electrical connector to the water and fuel sensor. While you're tightening the three mounting nuts, you'll want to slide the FAST assembly all the way toward the front of the truck. All right, now you can connect the outlet line to the FAST system and then seat the quick connect clip, then connect the FAST return line to the FAST system and using a 9 16 wrench, tighten that fitting. Now, I can't really show you me doing that process just because it is quite a bit of a tight fit up in there. All right, now we're going to prepare the inlet line for the FAST system. So take your PLB fitting, we're going to apply grease to the bar portion, get some grease inside of our fuel line. Now we can install the fitting into the fuel line. Okay. Now place your hose clamp onto the fuel line. Then place some grease to the bar portion of this quick connect fitting. Put some grease in our fuel line. And press this into the fuel line. Now this is not a push lock fitting, so it does require a hose clamp. Now we can go ahead and tighten that hose clamp. After the fuel feed line has been assembled, go ahead and install it onto the truck as shown in this still image. going to go ahead and prepare the fast extreme water separator and the factory filter element. Now with this system, we're going to be installing our optional billet filter cap. Take our fast XWS and just place a thin layer of grease on the filter o-ring. Take the factory water separator and place a thin layer of grease on this bottom o-ring here. Press this down into the filter cap until it is fully seated. You'll feel it stop. You shouldn't have to press too hard. Now I can place the new O-ring that was supplied with the factory filter element onto the billet filter cap. And we're going to grease this O-ring as well. Now we're going to take the small blue o-ring that was supplied with the new factory water separator element and place this on the bottom of the water separator probe. Now that we have all of the fuel lines connected before we put the filters on it's never a bad idea to use a zip tie and secure all of the fuel lines. All right now our last step is going to be installing the FAST XWS and the factory element. You're going to install the XWS first. Then tighten that filter accordingly. Then we can install the factory element with our optional billet filter cap. And now when we tighten this, you'll be using a 36 millimeter socket. Okay, for the final step, we're going to prime the FAST system. Now for this drop-in series unit on the L5P, there's no need to loosen either one of the filters. All you're going to do is place the ignition in the run position and allow the lift pump to run, and sometimes that will take a couple of ignition cycles. Once you hear the lift pump prime, you can go ahead and start the truck and check for leaks. Now one thing you might notice after a fresh installation is you'll have a slightly extended crank time, but this should go away after the first drive. Now that the installation is completed, your truck is going to enjoy the benefits of pure diesel fuel, free of air and vapor, debris, and water. Now for more information or to order your system today, be sure to check them out at FastRide.com.